Hello everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and continue learning our trigonometric proofs by using properties. Okay, so for what I did now for the warm up, I changed it up a little bit. So I want you to go ahead and look at this student's work, student XYZ. Um, and here is his work. The question that it was asked to him is simplify and prove the following question right here in bold. Okay, so go ahead and give it a try. Look at their work. And what feedback would you give them? So go ahead and pause the video. Give it a try. Okay, so hopefully you were able to see this student's work and we were able to see that, hey, overall this student um, knew how to, uh, how to substitute. So they saw tangent um, in this case and wrote it as sine over cosine. Saw sine and wrote it as sine and cotangent is cosine over sine. So overall they did uh, pretty good and they are working on the left hand side. Okay, so what we can see next on the following step is that even though the student knew how to simplify, in this case, sine right here and sine right here, he knew that one in the numerator, one in the denominator are simplified to one, okay, which left him just cosine and this right here. So he was able to simplify inside the parentheses, but what was something that this student actually forgot? Well, hopefully you're able to see that, hey, this student did do a good job right here, but um, forgot to uh, bring down the cosine that we're going to distribute. And now if they were able to do this next step that they forgot, um, they could see that this would be uh, sine of x times cosine times cosine is cosine oops, plus cosine squared x, which would have indeed um, made this a true statement. Okay, so in this case, uh, one feedback that I would give the student is make sure you bring down um, all your terms, make sure you distribute, um, do FOIL if you have to, but um, that is what I would uh, see from that work. Okay, so we are on Wednesday. Um, we're almost at Thanksgiving break, uh, which is super cool. Uh, fun, uh, friendly reminder that my power hour is at 2.30. Yesterday, the flashcards were due, and today, 6.1 is due. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Um, we will continue to prove these by using our properties in our notes. Okay. And here are the notes. So if you have not um, written these down, guys, please have them written down. I believe in the exam, they will give you some of these, uh, but overall it's good to have them on our notebook for us to reference back to. Okay, so pause the video if you need them. Okay, alrighty. So let's go ahead and start with the first example. Um, some tips and tricks when we're doing our verifying of our trick um, proofs is to pick the one with the most information. Um, oftentimes we don't know what that means. Uh, pretty much pick the one that looks the most difficult because if it's it looks more difficult, it's most of the times you'll be able to um, modify it to your liking so it can work, so it could equal to the right hand side. Okay, uh, once you do that, guys, stick to only one side. So remember, we have uh, the left hand side of the equation and then the right hand side of the equation. So if you're going to mess with the left hand side, uh, do it all the way through and then make it equal to the right hand side. Okay, um, continue using the Pythagorean identity, especially when you see a one, for example, sine squared or a cosine squared or a tangent squared or even the, the reciprocals, uh, because those are great. Um, places where this this Pythagorean identity um, exists, right? All right, so let's go ahead and begin and let me go ahead and hide all of my panels so I can have more space. Okay, I'll hide video in, okay. Okay, all right, so I want you guys to go ahead and give this a try. We have the left-hand side, we have the right-hand side, and I want you to pick between the left-hand side and the right hand side. And I want you to pick, hey, which one of these looks a little bit more complicated? Which one of these will go ahead and help me out in, in um, simplifying to the other? So just by looking at this, we can see that, hey, I have way more um, information on the left hand side. And I can click. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify that. So we have sine right here. Sine is still sine, so now I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, based on what we learned on Monday, um, we change everything to sines and cosines. Cotangent 
even though it is one over tangent, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna go straight to cosine over sine. Cosine x divided by sine of x plus my cosine. I'm gonna make it as a fraction. So cosine x over one. This helps me see how I'm gonna multiply fractions. Um, and tangent, we can see tangent is sine of x divided by cosine of x. Okay. And this somehow is going to go ahead and simplify and equal cosine x plus sine x, the right hand side. Okay. So let's go ahead and simplify inside the parentheses before we do anything crazy. And we can see that inside our parentheses, we have sine on the numerator being multiplied times sine in the denominator. So hopefully you're able to see that both of these simplify to one. So we're left with sine of x. And then we have, um, over one, sorry. We have cosine x, sine x plus one, I'm sorry, sine x over one. Okay. From here, all we have to do is distribute to both terms. So we have sine of x times cosine of x divided by sine of x plus sine of x. And if we distribute it to this one, we get times sine of x. So we have cosine x, right? Because these two simplify to one plus sine squared x because sine times sine is sine squared. So this is what we have for our left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we had this right here. So I'm gonna bring it down. So equals cosine x plus sine squared x. So we can see that, hey, my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side. So indeed, this is true, okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and try one more. And we have verify the following one. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. All right, so hopefully you were able to see that, hey, this right here, that's not that enemy. <laughs> this one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the right hand side. Okay, so one equals all of this good stuff. Keep in mind, I like, like writing it as a fraction because I know I'm gonna go ahead and distribute. So sine of X, I'm gonna write as a fraction over one. I can do this because it's just a one. Okay, um, the cosine, I'm gonna do the same thing, plus cosine X over one really does help me. And cotangent, we saw cotangent is cosine over sine. Cosine X divided by sine of X. Okay, so we have all of this right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to combine some like terms inside the parentheses. So I have sine of x on the outside, nothing that changes. So we have sine, another sine over here. Um, some of us can go ahead and do this in two steps. Uh, I saw that in class, which was awesome. But um, a nice uh, pace would be to go ahead and do it in each individual step but it's completely up to you. Then we distribute sine times sine. That will give me my sine squared x plus sine times uh, cosine right here would be give me sine x cosine squared x over sine x. From here, I can go ahead and simplify by noticing that, hey, I have sine, I have sine, I can simplify it equal to one. So I'm left with sine squared x plus uh, cosine squared x. Sorry about that, I blanked out. Now I see uh, the sine function is squared and the cosine function is squared. So what do you think um, would go ahead and would go ahead and be a proper substitution here? Hopefully you thought about the Pythagorean identity, specifically this one right here. Um, cosine squared plus sine squared equals to one. So this right here is one on my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side. Okay. So indeed this one worked as well. Um, I do have a math beam for us. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, I am a big fan of Marvel. So this was perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, for some practice problems, I'm gonna go ahead and help you guys out for this. Um, this is what I showed on Pear Deck. So this is due at five, so I'm gonna help some of you guys out. Um, but I am also available at 234 power hour. So I did this one in class, so I'll do it here as well. 
And so we have cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared. Now, as much as I would want to tell you, hey, change to sines and cosines, I, he, I see here a one and I see squares of trig functions, the reciprocal of the trig functions, and I'm going to go ahead and rely on my Pythagorean identities. If this doesn't work, then I'll go back and try the, these um, reciprocal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see that the cosecant and the cotangent appear right over here, which says the following cotangent squared theta or x plus one is equal to cosecant um, squared theta. So hopefully you see like, hey, my co cosine cosecant is right here and my cotangent, right, is right over here. So we are gonna go ahead and think of a method to try to make this match. So hopefully this one's not that bad. We see that cotangent, we go ahead and subtract cotangents on both sides. On the left-hand side, it equals to zero, and I'm left with one equals cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. Okay, from here, we can see that, hey, this is what I have for my right-hand side, and it says it's equal to my left-hand side. So ideally, I'm gonna go ahead and substitute this to be one for my left-hand side, because this is what it equals to. So I can swap it, I can substitute it, and then I'm gonna bring down my right-hand side, which is one. So one equals one. So that is how this one was able to be uh, proven. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and help you guys out with these next problems. Um, so we have tangent, cosecant, and cosine. So the first thing I want you to know is that, hey, I'm gonna rely on my right-hand side. This right here will be um, everything in sines and cosines. So it's gonna be sine of x divided by cosine of x times my reciprocal cosecant, in case you didn't know, it's this one, one over sine of x times cosine of x over one. Okay, um, so this one messed up some of us, but um, it really wasn't that bad, I hope. And just relying on the idea that, hey, you have something that's being multiplied and divided the same number. Um, so hopefully you're able to see that, oh snap, that equals equal to one. And it occurs one more time, cosine divided by cosine also equals to one. So I ideally have one over one equals one, right? The left-hand side. So one equals one. So this is how we were able to prove it. The left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Therefore, this identity, this, uh, this identity was able to be true. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do one more. Uh, uh, secant theta minus cosine theta is equal to sine times tangent. Well, this one right here did uh, uh, let us struggle, but this is honestly the idea of having both sides that are really good, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and not knowing which way to go ahead and attempt. But as I mentioned in the class, guys, no matter which side you do, you should be able to uh, uh, simplify for them to both equal the same term. So. Uh, just by simplifying everything into sines and cosines, I have one over cosine theta minus cosine theta is equal to sine theta times sine theta uh, over cosine theta. Now, in class, the popular option was the left-hand side because um, we didn't want to go ahead and use the Pythagorean um, identities uh, from the start. Okay, um, so I'll go ahead and do that since that's what most people felt comfortable with. But um, the right-hand side still does work, okay? So this right here, one over cosine minus cosine, I want you to think about it like, oh, how, what did you do when you had a fraction, let's say one half minus, I don't know, minus two. Well, one of the first things you should be thinking is like, oh snap, I need to get the same denominator. I need to find a way to um, um, get them to have the same denominator. So the same thing occurs. In this case, you would try to go ahead and multiply the whole number by that two over two to get that same um, denominator from the other fraction. So by doing that, we were able to see that, hey, I can do that same idea to get this denominator. So let's go ahead and write everything again. So this is cosine 
theta minus cosine theta over one. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by something that's gonna give me a denominator of cosine. So super simple, something that I can multiply one by is cosine. However, I can't just do that. I can only multiply by the denominator of cosine if the numerator is also the same number, because ideally you're still multiplying by the same number on top, same number on the bottom, which we know is uh, one. So we're multiplying by one, right? Okie dokie. So we have one over cosine now, theta minus cosine squared theta over cosine theta. So if I combine these fractions, now that I have the same denominator, I have one over cosine squared theta over cosine theta. Awesome, awesome. Well, now that I have one over cosine, I'm gonna go ahead and try my best to simplify this. Okay, so we have one over cosine, we have a one, we have a cosine squared. So hopefully you're thinking about the Pythagorean identities. Now, from here, hopefully you're able to see it. The one that best matches is the first one. Um, that says cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. So by moving this cosine to the right-hand side, by subtraction, I get sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine squared theta. Because when I move the cosine to the right, it became a negative. So I'm left with sine squared theta over cosine theta. Well, it looks pretty dang good, but hopefully you're able to see that, hey, um, it's not quite what I want here. Well, uh, keep in mind, we have sine squared. So ideally, this is the same thing as saying sine theta times sine theta over cosine theta, which we can see, we can break this up into two different fractions. Um, where they would equal to my right hand side. Okay, so this is the same thing as saying um, this right here would be the same thing as saying tangent theta. So here is where we have sine theta, and I'm really sorry about how I am writing, but this right here is the left hand side is equal to the original right hand side. Therefore, these are would be uh, true. Okay. Hopefully this helped, guys. Um, I know they can be a little intimidating, but with practice and with using your notes, I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and learn these um, fairly quickly. Okay. Um, I also posted some additional uh, examples in Teams so you guys can go ahead and try. Okay. As always, guys, this has been a pleasure. And if you have questions, please reach out to me. Okay. Alrighty, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.